Hello everyone! Uh, as you all remember, uh, a while ago there was uh, this nice tournament being held, it was the Tal Memorial in Moscow. Uh, Vishwanathan Anand won that tournament uh, one whole point ahead of uh, Karakin and Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, and I believe Mamed Yarov also had five points, so uh, re really a, a tough tournament. Uh, Vishwanathan Anand wins it. And um, after the tournament there was this uh, weird game and uh, an even weirder matchup. So we have three world champions, uh, Kramnik Anand and Karpov, former world champions, uh, uh, are playing a game against uh, three, let's say, Russian uh, Russian grandmasters, but uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, future talents, or call it whatever you want, as each of them are, are extremely strong, and each of them ha definitely has an opportunity to one day become a, a, a world champion themselves. Uh, and they are Daniel Dubov, Jan Nepomniashi, and uh, Sergei Karyakin. Uh, three world champions have the white pieces, and uh, it's it's quite an interesting game. Uh, if you want, uh, you can also check out the original footage of this game. I will put a link uh, uh, in the description below where you can check it out. Uh, the video is uploaded on Chessbase India's uh, YouTube channel, and it's, it's quite enjoyable. Feel free to check it out as well. Uh, so, first move, uh, Kramnik opens the game with d4. Uh, Dubov, knight to f6, we have c4 by Anand, uh, e6 by Nepomniashi, and knight to f3 by Karpov, uh, going for the anti-Nimzo Indian. Uh, b6, uh, Karakin decides that uh, they will play the Queen's Indian defense. Uh, we have g3, uh, bishop to b7, bishop to g2, uh, now bishop to b4 check, uh, bishop to d2 blocking, uh, and now c5 by Karakin. Uh, bishop captures on b4, c captures on b4, and now castles. Uh, black team castles as well, uh, and we have uh, queen to d3 by Karpov. Uh, d6, knight b to d2, a5 now, uh, and a3. And here, uh, what do you do? It's Nepomniashi on the move, probably best is to capture on a3, uh, but uh, he decides to play knight to a6. Uh, we have knight to h4 by Karpov. Uh, offering an exchange of the light square bishops, uh, queen to e7, and Kramnik goes e4. Uh, rook f to d8, uh, we have rook f to d1, and now rook a to c8 uh, by Karyakin, and here uh, Karpov plays rook a to c1. So all of the pieces are developed, uh, what do you do here now? Uh, g6, uh, we have knight to f1, uh, e5 now by Dubov, and uh, knight to e3. Uh, e captures on d4, and here Karpov plays uh, knight to d5. Uh, attacking the queen, also the knight on f6, uh, Karakin captures it, knight, uh, bishop captures on d5, uh, and Kramnik recaptures, uh, e captures on d5. E captures on d5 is the only correct capture, uh, c captures on d5 pretty much loses the game for white, after rook captures on c1, rook captures, and knight to c5. Uh, now attacking the queen, also with a triple attack on the e4 pawn, after the queen moves, first you capture uh, to get, uh, get rid of your bad pawn structure, pawn captures, and now you push d3, uh, you have a, a monster past d pawn here, and also uh, the, these pawns will, will fall easily. So, uh, after bishop captures on d5, Kramnik plays the correct decision, e captures on d5, uh, and now knight to c5, attacking the queen. Uh, queen to f3 by Anand, d3 now. Uh, a captures on b4, a captures on b4, and now bishop to f1 by Kramnik. Uh, queen to e5, uh, rook to b1, Anand defends that b2 pawn, uh, rook to e8, and now uh, bishop captures on d3, Karpov grabs the pawn. Uh, queen to g5 by Karyakin, uh, we have bishop to f1, Kramnik returns the bishop uh, all the way home, uh, and Dubov goes knight to g4. Uh, bishop to h3, uh, we have h5 now, defending the knight, uh, rook to d4, uh, piling up on the knight on g4, uh, and here f5. And Karpov uh, spots the opportunity to trade off queens. Queen to f4. Uh, Karakin isn't interested in this, uh, queen to f6, and uh, here uh, Vlad grabs the knight. Bishop captures on g4. Uh, h captures on g4 by Dubov, and now rook b to d1. Uh, we have king to f7 by Karakin. Uh, h3. Uh, rook to e5, and now uh, white certainly uh, is uh, in a lot of trouble here. Uh, black is preparing g5, uh, that's the idea of rook to e5. You have to protect uh, the f5 pawn first, uh, then you can push g5 and win a piece here. Uh, and you can't really just move the knight to g2, uh, moving the knight to g2 would still result in g5. And now you have to move the queen, you either can move it to c1 or d2, but it doesn't matter. Uh, either you put it on c1 or d2, you get knight to b3. Uh, and 
uh, you lose the exchange here. So after this rook to e5, uh, h captures on g4 was played, uh, and now g5. Uh, queen to f3, g captures on h4, h uh, first g5, Kramnik plays this move, uh, and it's the best move for white as it uh, opens up the attack from the rook on d4 to the pawn on h4. Uh, queen captures and now rook captures on h4 and now uh, the white team uh, is down a piece uh, but they have the open h file maybe for for some counter attacking where maybe maybe this rook can also come into the game uh, and double up on the h file uh, could be could be interesting uh, we have rook to g8 here uh, now comes rook d to d4 uh, knight to d7 and now rook to h5 attacking the queen and uh, uh, this is the problem. Uh, if it was Karakin's move here, I'm sure uh, Black would Black would play uh, a nice move, uh, simply returning the queen to g6, getting uh, the queen out of the way. Uh, but it's Dubov's move, and Dubov uh, plays rook to e1 check. Uh, we have king to g2, uh, and here Nepomniashi plays knight to e5. Uh, yet again, the best move is simply queen to g6, getting the queen out of the way. Uh, and after Black does double up uh, on the h file, king to e8 and the king will uh, find find safety on the queen side. Uh, but it's Nepomniashi's move, he plays knight to e5, now of course if white captures then black captures, but this is actually a blunder that loses the game. Uh, when Karpov saw this, Karpov was very happy and he played uh, rook captures on g5. And uh, now it's finally Karakin's move, but Karakin uh, the, uh, can't really save the situation here, uh, as if you capture the queen then simply rook captures uh, with check, uh, your king has to move, and now you capture the knight, and now you're up uh, two pawns. Uh, both players have two rooks, and white is up two pawns, so completely winning for white. So after rook to g5, uh, Karakin played rook to g1 check, and it's a very nice idea. Uh, now if you play uh, king captures, uh, knight captures on f3 wins the game for black. Uh, king has to move, knight captures on g5, uh, black is up a whole piece uh, w winning this game. Uh, but uh, after this rook to g1 check, Kramnik isn't interested in this uh, trickery. He plays uh, king to h3, and now there's really nothing uh, more for black to do here. Uh, rook to h8 was played, uh, rook blocks, uh, this is the only good move. Uh, you can't block with this rook, th because then uh, knight captures queen, and then captures rook on d4 afterwards. Uh, so, rook to h4 blocking. Uh, we have rook captures with check, pawn captures, and now knight captures. Uh, queen on f3, as you do have to capture the queen, uh, but this falls to the same idea. Now, uh, rook captures on f5 with check, king moves, and now rook captures uh, knight here. And instead of that, that position where you would have two rooks uh, uh, each, plus uh, white would be up two pawns, now you have one rook each, uh, and white is still up, uh, up two pawns. So, I mean... Uh, three world champions being up two pawns, uh, that's that's like uh, enough advantage. You don't become world champion if you, if you can't uh, win a game being up two pawns. Uh, so rook to c1, uh, we have b3. Now all, all of the pawns on the queen side are protected. The rook from f3 is guarding the b3 pawn. Uh, rook to c3, offering an exchange here. Uh, of course you can't capture, then this pawn would be winning. Uh, Kramnik boldly plays king to g4. Uh, we have b5. Simply h5 check, a king moves, now c captures on b5, uh, rook to c5 attacking the pawns, but now king to g5, uh, rook captures, uh, we have h6 check, king moves, and now uh, king to g6. Uh, rook to b7, uh, king to f6 attacking the pawn, rook checks, king moves, uh, we have uh, rook back to c7, uh, rook to, rook to d, uh, d6, uh, king to c3, and now king to g6, and uh, this was uh, Kramnik's move, this king to g6, and uh, here uh, the, the black team resigned the game. So uh, Kramnik opened with d4, and Kramnik finished the game with king to g6, now there's really nothing for, for black to do here, uh, as uh, white is threatening mate, white is threatening to promote this pawn to a queen, uh, it's all over. So a very interesting game, and uh, I, did, I did prepare a photo of this matchup, uh, I even prepared it in full screen, so here you have it. Uh, from the left to the right, you have Karpov on the on the left, uh, then Anand, then Vladimir Kramnik, then Sergei Karakin, Jan Nepomniashi, and all the way to the right, Daniel Dubov. So, uh, really an interesting matchup, and uh, I, I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I definitely do suggest 
uh, I definitely do suggest you to check out the original footage. Uh, like I said, there will be a link in the description below. Do check it out and, uh, you know, just uh, enjoy chess. Uh, have a great Friday, everyone. And, uh, yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Kamil Kuzminski, Joe Andari, uh, Douglas Jennings, and uh, Draco Stein for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, probably with another game from the 2018 candidates tournament. So thank you all and I'll see you soon.